There you go. All right. Hi, Trisha. Welcome. Hi, Mikey. Hi, Kelly. Do you guys all have your hot cocoa slash tea slash coffee handy today I have coffee I woke up five minutes ago wow did you wake up late or is it still early for you I think it's gonna be too warm for a sweater in here. It's 2 p.m. Oh no. I have to feed my four cats. Ooh, four cats. Ow. Kevin, hi. Hi, guys. It's just taking but just taking it real slow. Since uh, I said I would start at uh, 15 past 2 so I'm a bit early on my late time <laughs> Oh, it's only through there. It's 7, 12 p.m. here. <laughs> yeah, you guys are five hours ahead of us. How was your day, Kevin? <laughs> how, how was everyone's day? Mike says, I exercise, but 
my my English is not warmed up yet. <laughs> okay. Starting over. Mikey says I, I exercised twice today. I am humming the theme of the rock in my head. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> It's 1 p.m. for me, so I guess you are um, on the west of me. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm fully awakened. Sure. Do you do? You, are you starting to see good results from all the exercise, Mikey? I mean, I think you should, but I'm, I'm still wondering. Central time zone, yeah. <laughs> bomb. <laughs> what exactly qualifies as 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 bomb uh, pasta at restaurant today? Last week before Christmas break. Oh yeah, how long is the Christmas break? Hi, Misha. Hi, lab accident. Hi, guys. I'm like melting on my table. Dominic says, I've been on a pot pie binge. Now I'm trying to think of things to put in a savory pie besides the usual chicken turkey pot pie. Do, does it have to be one with s s like a sauce in it? Because uh, the, the m sort of tortillard that we have here is, is quite interesting on its own. You could do a fish a salmon pie too. It's really delicious. You could try and do one that is um, vegan with lentils and veggies and something like um, sunflower seeds in there. Two weeks, that's nice. So Mikey says, I have tons more energy and much less pain, so the exercise has got to be doing something. Oh, that's so great. I'm so happy for you. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Yay, good news. We definitely can use those. I'm thinking of even making a jambalaya pot pie, but too much rice. Yeah, the classics we have here are um, salmon, which is something like basically salmon, onions, potatoes, s like um, seasonings in a crust. The meat pie, uh, one is like with ground meat, that one is quite common, but there's also a very localized one that has like tiny squares of meat, various meat, like you would get beef, pork, uh, I don't remember what else. Um, trying to think. I used to really like um, salmon pie, but I think I like them all. Who who doesn't like a good pie? I mean, <laughs> whatever's in it. <laughs> Hi, Mark Chap. Hi. This dream always makes me hungry. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad we we all um, hop in here and talk about food. I don't know many people that are not made happier by talking about food. It's just its just a common ground for everyone. We all eat, right? <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking I could really go for a good poutine. <laughs> I've earned it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, poutine, that's an, that's an artery blocker if there ever was one. It's either an artery blocker or uh, a hangover meal. You know, <laughs> yeah, halfway through the stream, I'm like, time to order food. <laughs> yeah. We don't order a lot of food. Like, I'm realizing this with the um, the current situation and talking to friends and people online. And 
Um, we ordered the groceries, which is sort of very common nowadays, but we don't order a lot from restaurants. The only time we eat um, from a restaurant, we usually go go take it out ourselves because it's nearby. So we walk over there, we get the stuff and we come back. I, I don't even know how to order <laughs> from a restaurant anymore. I know they're like apps and whatnot, but I would have to ask my friends like, hey, um, which one do you use and how, how do you like it? And how does it work? Where do you tip? How, how? I don't know. I was actually considering a southwestern pie. If you've ever had a southwestern egg roll taquito, they're super addictive. I've never had any of that. What's in the southwest? <coughs> What's in a southwestern pie? Could someone make chocolate from scratch at home? Yeah, if you have. Um, cocoa butter, um, sugar, and cacao powder, but it's a really complex process to get it to uh, temper well. But you could make yourself a hot cocoa. That might satisfy the, the chocolate cravings. <laughs> What's in it? What's in it? I've I don't I haven't eaten a lot of um uh southwestern food in general, whether from the US or from uh Central America and all that. It's not something I reach for. Mostly because there's a lot of onions in there and eating onions make me, makes me smell like onions and I hate it. <laughs> so I don't I don't cook with onions or garlic much because it's I hate the stink. <laughs> it's black beans, peppers, lots of cheese. Oh, that would kill me right though. Spinach and chicken and warm spices. It sounds really good. Screw it, I'm walking to the shop. Be right back. <laughs> be right back. All right. Grab something for us. <laughs> Potatoes, Mexican chorizo, assorted pepper. Chorizo is amazing. I really like um, uh, the dried cured meats. It's usually a, a tiny bit fatter, so it's tastier too. I'm reading what's in a southwestern pie, and I'm like, it feels like something you would put more in a quesadilla rather than in in like a, a flaky dough kind of pie. My mom loves potatoes, but my dad is a rice bread kind of guy. Potatoes are life. <laughs> I'm getting grilled curry lamb tonight, courtesy of my son. That sounds amazing. Lamb is one meat that pairs really well with spices. Bonjour, Eve, Pico and Scout. Hello. Hey, Sally! So nice to see you. The cats are all fast asleep, but they, they are there in spirit with us. Eating a piece of chocolate orange. This is the season for the chocolate oranges. Though we hardly ever see the black chocolate ones. Like the only thing I've seen, not that I would buy it because I'm, I don't do um, chocolate and orange, but I've seen the, the the brand is like Terry's, I think Terry's oranges, and there's only the milk chocolate and orange, and then I've seen like the Star brand, um, that's like you know just an, an off brand, and it's still milk chocolate and orange, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> My brother and my son eat tons of garlic when they come in my room. At the same time, it really stings to my head. <laughs> so it's not just me then. I just, I just don't do like sweet onion armpit smell. No, 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 thank you. <laughs> TMI. Well, we all sweat, so. And fire. Well, it's not normally a pie, more just a taco filling or something. Okay, figures. 
Hi, Stephen. Hi, Phoebe. Hi, April. Hi, Carolyn. Ooh, welcome, everyone. Carolyn says, here with my cat, Nigel. Hi, Nigel. Give him a couple of scratches for us. I was, um, uh, me and Mr. E, we, or Mr. E and I, um, either way, we both, um, follow an account on Instagram that's named Flatbush Cat, and it's, um, it's a rescue organization that's in, um, Flatbush, New York, and they, they do a lot of amazing, insane work to help with the cat population over there, but they posted, um, the stories might be gone, but they posted a, a, a regular post recently about a mom cat that they, uh, they managed to rescue with her litter of, of beans, of baby beans cats. And there's a teeny tiny calico and a teeny tiny tortie in there. And like both of us were melting. Like, ah, there's a little torty bean. Ah, since we have a torty and, and like, once you get a torty, you're like done for life. There's something really compelling about those darn cats. <laughs> and Misha says, if you can stuff it into a tortilla, you can stuff it into pastry, <laughs> a croissant with the Southwestern filling. <laughs> and says I'm chilling in the line to get into the star with the stream on my headphones. Oh, awesome! So we are actually there with you. So we can sort of influence your choice. Um, get some Cadbury. Uh, what else? What is actually good? Cadbury bars are quite nice. Nestle is evil. Don't get a Nestle bar. <laughs> it will do. Nigel is purring. Aww. I'm starting off with the dark chocolate truffle. Ooh, that's fancy. Dang. I feel the way about Siamese. Yeah, I agree. My first cat was probably part Siamese because he really had a lot of the same behaviors. But there's something about seeing a, a teeny tiny furry bean sausage wiggling and, and seeing that it's a torty and you know that she's gonna be a handful and a half. There's really something heartwarming about that. <laughs> and I mean, a teeny tiny calico, Oh, I mean, every kitten is like, oh, a kitten. <laughs> uh, eyeing, eyeing up the chips. Well, you know, the official snack of the live stream is Doritos, right? Apparently. <laughs> I'm making pizza. Hey, Cyan, hi. Pizza sounds awesome. What do you put on yours? Screw it, I'll get a galaxy bar. What is that one? That's a a very um, UK... Uh, I don't think we have galaxy bars here. Editing video, ugh. I have lime water. Ooh, that sounds really refreshing. I have a coffee. There's really not much um, as gross as coffee breath, but I, I'm alone for now and... Um, I really need the extra caffeine today. There are Doritos sitting right next to my bed. I wouldn't have to move much to get them. <laughs> I feel that way about parrots. Oh, do you have parrots, April? When Siamese are that age, I call them smudge noses. Siamese, teeny tiny Siamese are adorable because they, they are born with so little coloring. Um, Kitten Academy had a, a, kid, a kitten recently, um, her name is uh, Quarter Pony, and she was born mostly white, but as she's aging, she's a, a few months now, she really darkened, like her, her nose became much darker, and the paws, and I don't remember exactly which extremities, but it's really cute to see them, because I think Siamese do that too, they're born like really, really, almost completely white, and and very quickly they get their coloring and it's so cute. It's it's adorable. Smudged noses. It's look like someone smudged some suit on them. I have a GV spicy guacamole. What what's that? It's GV. Are those Doritos? 
Mm. I have tuna, shrimps, scallops, and octopus. Oh wow, that's fancy. Can you can you do the tomato sauce, or if you have to put something like a, a different sauce on your pizza? And what about cheese? Because th there's someone, uh, there's a lot of people that underestimate how tasty a pizza without cheese can be. Oh, great value from Walmart. I mean, if it's delicious, it's delicious, right? Mm. Some parrots have a lifespan. Yeah, definitely. Parrots can live to a very uh, old age. Oh, by the way, I just watched the latest episode of IQ. Such as this. I am so late on IQ. I haven't watched. Uh, I think I watched first and second season. I don't know if I watched the third one. Um, I need to, I really need to pick up on it. And like, I, I had started to read the manga, but there's just so many things to do. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> miss being a, a teenager for that because you have kind of, you kind of have all the time in the world, actually. But yeah, Haikyuu, the first season is absolutely amazing. And then it sort of loses a bit of steam because it's a lot of um, tournaments. And it's interesting, but it's it's not the same kind of pace as you get in the first season. First season is awesome. I miss, I miss Hinata and Kakeyama. They're so good. I did, but he died. Oh no! So sorry for your loss. You will. Oh, if you do, you have to share with us pictures in the Discord or something. So Cyan says, I use mayonnaise that I blend with basil and oregano. Oh, and oh, yeah, cheese. Really good fatty parsley. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can eat cheese. I, I don't remember exactly what your allergies are, except that they are very, very bad. <laughs> And like super complex, but I I don't actually remember if cheese is a yes or a no, because it it is a no for so many people. So, <laughs> but I'm glad that sounds like a super fancy pizza. They are pretty good, extra thin and light, and a decent amount of flavor. No deep required. Oh great. I had last night dream that I was getting. Oh, I'm sorry, Cyan. Aww. This is the kind of dream that you wake up and give Ruka a lot of hugs, right? I don't know if I should have pizza anymore. There's a lot of fat in it and it probably hurt my stomach. Well, if you can sort of get the dough and make it yourself, Mikey, you can really make it super healthy. Like, the sauce is not fat, the dough itself is not very fat, and uh, then you can decide what you put on it. So if you want to put some lean stuff, you can. If you want to put some veggies, you can. And cheese is actually optional. If the if the pizza has enough flavorings, you know, it's a bit like focaccia. You don't have cheese on focaccia, you know, or not a lot. The third season is more about training the freshmen and the current season is about the results of their training. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was a bit confused when they were like um, when they started introducing characters like um, Liev, because I mean th the gimmick of Haikyuu has to be super creative at a certain point because you're like, oh, who who else can they introduce and make them different now? And it sort of takes a spin. <laughs> oh no, April! I'm so sorry. We need to talk about cheerful things. <laughs> and yes, sending sending plenty of internet hugs. Guys, do you know what? This stupid year is almost over. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, okay. Nobody says anything bad about 2021 yet. Let's give us a tiny, tiny fleck of hope. I mean, I, I was thinking on it, and I was like, oh, there's like two weeks until Christmas. Wait, what? 
And now it's even less than two weeks. Where have the days gone? And then a week after that, it's like the end of 2020. A year that nobody can ever forget. I mean, what? And we will have stupid orange compliments screwing everything up. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, it's hard to say if it makes the situation better, but it certainly doesn't make it worse. I'm sorry, and I'm sending out hugs to everyone who's sad right now. So, oh, yes, I agree with Mikey. Yeah, they introduced a lot of new characters one more episode and the season is over. I really have to catch up on that. But I'm like, I really like the OG characters, like Nekoma and um, Keresno. Oh, so good. <laughs> What's with card readers breaking so much? Probably because they're being used a lot more. Yeah, that, that would track. <laughs> so what did you end up getting, Kevin? My grandbaby's Christmas present has arrived, so that's a highlight of this last month long week. Aww. What did you get her? All right, I should actually get sorry, learn something right. <laughs> Sally says, when I was a kid, we had seven long-haired cats, six of them descendants of the original stray barn cat. Whoa. A beautiful dark calico. Spain Uter wasn't as promoted back then. I'm glad that has changed. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if it's, um, there's always, it's always better to spay and neuter because otherwise it, it grows exponentially, but, um, in certain settings, like in, if you have a barn, it's, it's not always a bad idea to have a bit more mouser cats than less. But then again, not too many of them. So like if the original mom has a litter, that's a good number of cats. Like the the kid the kids don't need to have litters of their own. Like they then you can sort of spin neuter everyone. A real practice hair mannequin with 20 inch long hair to play with and some- Whoa! Oh, she's gonna have so much fun with that. <laughs> I randomly got a free tote bag from Doctors Without Borders. Ooh! Yeah, that's nice. Did you, did you like, give to their charity or...? The real one has real hair and was the same price as the toy variety. Wait, what? Yeah, cats are like rabbit, but at least rabbits eat grass. Well, cats eat, eat mice and rats. So depending on where you live... We had to get really good at finding homes for kittens. Aww. Was she like uh, of the um, sort of Norwegian forest cat or Maine Coon type of cat? Those make excellent like uh, farm animals. It's just insane. There's a... Um, uh, someone in, in the family that has like a, a big fluffy cat and I'm pretty sure that cat is part sort of Maine Coon or Norwegian forest cat because he is a hunter like he will go out at minus Celsius minus 20 Celsius no problem hunt whatever bring it back and it's just basically unstoppable <laughs> but they live like they live in, in, in more of the countryside so it's fine like, there's use for a good hunting cat there. I got a fat thingy of chocolate milk and a galaxy bar for my son and adult. <laughs> I didn't donate, but I did after I got a free bag. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, and Pokemon. Wait, what? Why did you get Pokemon cards? Hi, Paulo. 
New York needs lots of cats. I remember hearing about all the starving rats when the pandemic started and they went crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a problem because, like, the cats breed way too fast and way too much. So you kind of still need to control the population. And even if a cat is spayed or neuter and still a feral cat, they will still hunt. So they're good. But yeah, they, they definitely can use all the cats. I have to send my mom a gift. I got her a robot vacuum. <laughs> because big house and she sends it. Aww. So because I can't be helping her. Aww, that's lovely. <laughs> Is it like a Roomba? Xiaomi Roborock. Oh, cool! <laughs> she wasn't a main Coon nor a Norwegian forest cat, more of a petite build. I don't see many cats like that now. Yeah. Usually the long haired cats are like beefy. There is a teeny tiny uh, diluted turkey, long haired turkey in the neighborhood. I think she's been adopted out by someone who was sort of sad to see her outside like she was left outside she was an outdoors cat but i'm not quite sure that was what she wanted so i think someone might have um, picked her up i miss my mother-in-law cat I haven't seen her in two weeks because these time oh she sounds so sweet she's such a cute little cat switching to water because cold coffee is not great <laughs> no, an iced latte is delicious. A, a hot coffee that has gone cold is not the same as an iced latte. Like, if I have a hot coffee, it's gonna have some sort of unsweetened creamer in it, and that's it. But if I'm making an iced coffee, first of all, it will have some ice in there, and uh, with cool drinks, I, I usually put a bit of sugar. Like I wouldn't want, sorry, I wouldn't want an ice latte that is warm, and I wouldn't want a warm coffee that is cold. I <laughs> had to get robot vacuum when I got Ruka. He sheds like crazy. How is he doing? Like with the the rash and everything. That's me with you. Yeah, same thing with you though. If I have a hot tea, it's just going to be tea and uh, possibly some creamer, depending on the tea. But no sugar. But if it's cold tea, like iced tea in the summer, it's kind of a, a bit better with like a bit of sugar. And there are some teas, like fruity teas, I don't really like them warm, but I love them cold. And the other way around, like a, an Earl Grey cold feels weird. What about coffee jello? Well, coffee jello is sweetened, right? And cold. Super sweet hot coffee can be kind of gross. Yeah, it, it is actually. <laughs> oh, and, and then when you're done with the cup and it's just there, especially if one uses real milk in there, it stinks so bad. Oh, I can't do old coffee stink. 
or like if someone was to eat some yogurt, sweetened yogurt, and and leave their finished cup of yogurt on the table. Ugh, it's so gross. Cold brew coffee is delicious. Yeah, it is. I used to do some like overnight. You just put some uh, grounds and water in a jar, like in a mason jar in the fridge, and then in the morning I would filter it out and add some sort of sugar, ice, and maybe some creamer. I don't get how people like dump a bunch of sugar into coffee or tea. Yeah, I don't know either. Like, it's just, ugh, I don't know. There's something really off of putting about the the warm, super sweet drink. He's slowly getting better. I got some new vitamins and supplements for him, and also coconut cream is helping a lot. I am so glad that it's helping. You're like the opposite of me, Amisha. <laughs> I want my hot tea sweet, no cream, and my cold tea straight, no sugar, no lemon, just tea and ice. Huh. What's hot squash? Hi, Bugs of Paint. <laughs> Uh, I know I, I heard I heard squash like we are watching the crown at the moment and um, there was an episode recently where Charles mentioned squash and I was like isn't that like a vegetable <laughs> mm, hold on <laughs> Squash is concentrated fruit juice, basically. Oh, okay. Is it an alcohol? Yeah, over here squash is like a pumpkin or a butternut squash or an acorn squash. It grows in the garden. <laughs> hey, hi Dan! So basically, when you buy the, the frozen juice concentrates, you just drink that straight up. <laughs> yes, F, but black. I do like Vietnamese coffee with sweetened condensed milk. Oh, that sounds, that sounds really good. I think I have a good opinion of condensed milk because I remember fudge. <laughs> I can't have it anymore. And the uh, coconut condensed milk is really not the same. It tastes too much of coconut. No booze. It's something everyone has some of. Took me a while to get used to, to it being called squash. Oh, that's interesting. I want this. Yeah, a good tea after the pizza. That sounds amazing, Cyan. Some really good Chinese tea. I don't even know what it has. Since only Chinese lettering on packages. <laughs> how did you how did you choose that one though? Did you just go like, oh that's tea? Getting this one. I'm in the no coffee camp, though I do love the smell of coffee beer brewing. I I I only drink coffee for the caffeine, to be honest. Like, it smells great, but it doesn't taste exactly like it smells, and the taste is kind of less fun than the smell. Like, I prefer the taste of tea, but tea is not as caffeinated than coffee is. 
I drink the hot lemon lime squash with a spearmint tea bag. Can't tell you why, but it's like a happy memory from childhood that I can. Oh, that's really lovely. Dang, I'm gonna have to Google squash later just to kind of get a visual of what it's like out of curiosity. I got it from my friend, she got it from China. Ooh! I love cinnamon, but recently allergies pulled a good old 2020 on that. Oh no! No, cinnamon! Cinnamon is life! <laughs> That's what I, I put some in my hot cocoa that is basically uh, cacao powder, cinnamon and some unsweetened creamer and hot water and I use, you know, the handheld whips and I whip it up Cinnamon is, is life <laughs> Hide your cup of cold carbonated caffeine Why, why are you hiding it? It's caffeine is caffeine <laughs> It's all valid, I guess Cinnamon makes me sneeze. <laughs> That's funny. Oh man, a good cinnamon bun, right? Not usually either Coke or RC. No, Pepsi. Sally says, I just got an order of loose teas from Upton Tea Importers. The old Grace Fabulous. They have several kind. Russian Carvin Ruibus. Oh man, all oh, gray. So I think my favorite favorite tea is uh, by Kuzmi Teas, and it's their um, Kashmir Chai. If I could get a, a big ass jar of it, I would. My mom got some air freshener diffuser, and I can tell if it's cinnamon rolls or gingerbread. As long as it smells good, right? There are so many teas to explain. I, I agree. It's like crazy. If, if if some... When you get into like the really um, sort of tea con con connoisseur thing, um, it, it's it's almost like insane. Like you have all sorts of provenances uh, and, and like... Um, it's a bit like wine, you know? <laughs> but it's tea instead. And I'm like, uh, okay, but... My chat's lagging like mad and there's a ministry of nothing than foosh. I had that problem last week. And ironically, my dad this week too hates the smell. Oh, really? Huh. That sounds really delicious, Cyan. Cyan says, um, <laughs> Coke, I love that. Mm. <laughs> that can't be taken out of context much. Uh, but lately I've been trying to support local, so I, sp I have started to buy Kraft Lemonade Cola Vanilla. It is so good. It sounds amazing, like the taste. April says, I really like Lapsang Sushan tea. That's the one that is smoked, right? It has such a strong smell. have some cinnamon flavored coke <laughs> <laughs> yeah um vanilla can sometimes taste like medicine and soda I, mean, I wish medicine would taste like vanilla and soda to be honest i'll take it <laughs>
smoked and fermented, really. So it's a bit like a puer, but smoked. And I don't think it's sold as a cake, right? It's sold more like in, in dried leaf form. Has anyone tried vanilla coke? <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh so much. Amisha says, now I'm wanting spiced orange tea and a nice dark honey. Ooh. I just the stream the chat. What's your favorite Coke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Vanilla Coke is an old school southern drink. It was a treat. I can see why. When will our drink orders be taken? <laughs> Extra sugar, but it was syrup, not ice cream. Those were floats and I missed them terribly. Well, you can probably make a float on your own, right? If it's only about putting some ice cream in, a, in, in like a carbonated drink. British ice cream makes really nice, really not nice floats. Oh, really? What's different about British ice cream than North American one? Or yeah. The fat content here is super high and it separates. <laughs> ah, that's so weird. What? So I made sure to have a measuring tape in case you wanted to measure our bodies again. <laughs> oh. Amisha says my grandparents had a drugstore with a real soda fountain. I made so many flavors of everything. That sounds awesome. I don't know, how did that work? Would you have like the carbonated water separately and then a bunch of syrups so you would mix them to create the drink. The fat content here is super high and it separates, yeah. Ooh. Mmm, who who doesn't want a nice carbonated beverage with a good layer of fat on top? Oh, now I get it, because in Finland Coca-Cola is called cookies. And the other thing is called entirely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in English, like, Coke is either a drink or a drug, so... <laughs> hmm. Need gold E numbers out the wazoo. <laughs> Isn't that just the coloring, though? Hey, Otto! Sorry I'm late, I was performing crochet blanket surgery. Uh-oh, what happened? What happened? Hey, welcome back, Trisha. How are the cats? Yeah, the drink is named after the drug. Uh, I know, but it's it became its own thing since there n there is no drugs in it anymore at all. Amisha says we had the main things mixed by the dispenser, but Grandpa set the syrup levels then. We had both drink syrups and sundae toppings. Ooh. I 
I'm going to see. Mikey says, I worked at Carvel when I was 15. What is Carvel? And I got to make Fudgy the Whale and <laughs> all kinds of ice cream. Just imagine it and you can make it. Ooh. Ooh. to do the foundation row really tight only realized it after doing several rows so had to replace the foundation <coughs> foundation row with another yarn and then remove the old whoa how do you even make that that's next level <laughs> dang what minutes till pizza is ready Ooh, you should take a picture and share it on discord cyan like in the recipe channel that would be awesome instagram hey hi hello popped in just to say that i'm a new subscriber here hey welcome <laughs> i discovered you had this channel separate from your main channel and sub right away that's really kind thank you I often crochet so tight that hook bends. Ooh, dang, don't you get cramps, Cyan? If I do that, I get so cramped up. Like a big knot in my, um, in my arm and shoulders. It took some time to, like, basically, uh, with crochet, you almost don't use sort of any tension, to, so it's easier to work. I don't know how to explain it, but I used to be really tight with my crochet as well. And then I realized that it wasn't really fun to have to, you know, dig inside the the stitches to form the new stitches. So I, I learned just to really loosen it up. Strawberry marshmallow sprites. What? Tastes like ice cream. But marshmallow anything makes a mess if it's steered. How do you make that happen? We got a new baby three days ago and the 11 month old we have doesn't like her. Aww. <laughs> Cats can be so territorial. That's not, not easy to manage. I like figuring out various crochet surgeries. <laughs> Otto, crochet surgeon. <laughs> hey, it's Sikabu. Hi. Yeah, a lot of cramps. Yeah, definitely. Dude, I, I, I feel... Are you left-handed, Cyan? Also hold crochet hook wrong. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe you're better to stick to knitting then. Yeah, I just used the resistance of my finger. Yeah, same. You basically... Like, the string is really loose. Not Not like loose that it would drop but loose in that it's really easy to work and it flows super smoothly took me a, a bit of time but I've, I've gotten that to that level one day i will be the level of master crocheter otto <laughs> maybe i should I, I should crochet a lot more if i want to reach that level but it, there's only 24 hours on a day right fudgy the whale was an ice cream cake it sounds kind of awesome. Is it shaped like a whale? The thing is, I usually do the foundation chain row with a hook that is a size smaller than what I'm going to use. Is it because otherwise it will be like the chain tends to be too big? Turns out that isn't helpful when you're working with DK yarns. Right-handed, but I was so small when I learned to crochet and I have tried to change grip with no success. One thing that really helped me was to get uh, hooks that have a sort of a, a comfy 
like they're metal hooks, but they have a silicone handle that is bigger. So since the hook is bigger, it's a same, bit of the same idea like this scratch pen. Since it's bigger, I tend to hold it less tight. But yeah, I, I used to work with bamboo hooks and they would be just like the straight up hook and they would be too small. I would get some awful cramps. I remember that one, Otto. Otto says, I once took a V-stitch blanket, basically cut it in half and put it back together because I didn't like the middle few rows. That was scary. I remember that surgery. <laughs> what? We only have those metal ones. Yeah, I got them from um, Clover, the Japanese company of all things uh, uh, like sewing and knitting and crocheting. They're basically... I don't have them nearby, but they're basically like your hook and then you have kind of a, a nice handle that is not too soft. It's not like like gaoi, it's not like rubbery, but it's, it's bigger, so holding it is really uh, more gentle on the fingers. Especially if you tend to use hooks like the around the four millimeter or four point five or five, um, like because those hooks are really small, but the handle makes it easier to hold. And since the hooks are metal in there, they're they're good quality. They're super sturdy. Otto says, yeah. So with larger yarn hooks, if you use the same size hook for the chain row chain and row ends up being wider longer than if you went down a size. So it, it's sort of too big, right? Tsukabu says, my mom has some bamboo hooks that she enjoys. I'm glad she does. I, I tried them. They were really nice. And I love that it's bamboo because it's a really easily renewable wood. But they were really too small too like n small to hold yeah i like the silicone covered metal hooks is that the ones you have because i know you have aluminum hooks Hato, but do you have the ones with the uh, the cover the handle cover cover is the best but i agree if i have to buy anything um i know there's a word for it but i can't think of it right now but everything anything sewing or crochet or um knitting i try to find it by clover and i try to find it made in japan it's not that hard and it's such a good quality. I need to check for those. Yeah, yeah, it's hand. And if you absolutely can find it, I'm pretty sure like you can hit us up on the Discord and we will see about setting you up something, like sending you the crochet, the hook you need or something. It's like a pencil grip, yeah. But it's it's really comfy and it's color coded, so it's really easy to find the one hook you need. One year my mom made me a cocoon shawl with gray alpaca yarn. I think I remember that. That's recent, right? I started with a 10 millimeter and no offense, mom, it was with small. Yeah, it is small. I found crochet hook with light. <laughs> well, what if you want to crochet in the middle of the night? You need that, right? <laughs> Hey, Amy! Hi! Welcome! My first set and always my go-to hooks are double-ended double -ended metal hooks that are silicone-coated. Don't think they sell it anymore. Is it? Is it by Clover? But yeah, the, the, the silicone handle is, is really... Uh, is much appreciated. my mom's set of those with lights and they are really comfortable and the light is more helpful than you'd think. Still makes me laugh, I mean, shows where, where we have gotten to that you can have crochet hooks with lights in them. How cool is that? <laughs> I think Sean Connery had loose denture. <laughs> I 
pizza sounds awesome. I, that reminds me, I am eating pizza tonight. Booyah. Oh, I'll have to check that link. And made by Hanamaka. I have to go check that out. Come on, come on, come on, Link. Where are you? Oh, they are so cute. Oh, oh I love them so much. They are so you, though they're so colorful and happy. Dang, I'm gonna wanna, I'm gonna have to crochet today after all this talk of, of um, crocheting. The grips are like triangles, so they are easy to hold. Ah, oh, dang, they look so good. I will write it down just to Monica. Sketchbooks always double as notebooks. I could go for pizza tonight, thanks for the <laughs> Well those are colorful. My ones are all dirty and faded from severe use. <laughs> but I mean that's that's awesome. Like you've been using them for a long time, and and they're per like that's to me that's such a good feeling to have a tool that you use a lot that you enjoy using and that lasts a long time. Like all the wear on it is is such a it's like the medals that the tool has earned. What's everyone's favorite pizza? Um. I would say it's a uh, wood, anything wood oven cooked without cheese on it. Hawaiian is tasty, delicious. I like olives on it. I like uh, some cured meats. Has to have tomato sauce. The hooks don't even have the size written on them anymore. Can you remember which size they are? Like, do you know by heart? been doing I've been going for a good eggplant parm pizza so is the um is the eggplant sort of the the dough that sounds interesting veggie no meat double cheese <laughs> there's um I get a, a type of olives from the um the grocery store that's it's they're called calabrese calabrese olives and um they're basically olives with uh like uh, pepper flakes and fennel seeds no garlic no onion and they taste so good they're like the best Now I have a note on the top of my blanket notes that <laughs> tells me what colors what size. <laughs> ah, I'm loving it so much. I love that your hooks are like, are like, so lived in. I don't know how to say it in English, but that that's the kind of thing that really makes me happy is when you see a palette that is, like, roughed up and used and, and like a bit dirty. Oh, dang, there's such a satisfying feeling to it. Now, the eggplant is the topping, but it's thinly sliced and has ricotta cheese and sauce. It's so good. Ooh. But everything else I use is from Clover. Yeah, I mean, no surprise. They really have good products. The Wabi Sabi. Is that it? Is that what it's called? Hold on. I don't have that one on my... <laughs> I gotta show you that. Do you remember when you sort of uh, explained what uh, Boro Motainai and Furudogu are? 
I wrote that now and I keep this note on my computer. Because there's there there, there are concepts that um, are kind of part of, of everything I do. So I kept them. Wabi Sabi, I have to add that one. <laughs> Pink posted. So it's the, the joy in the imperfection. Actually, it would be it would be furudogu. Actually, appreciation of old tools. I guess that's it. <laughs> See, they're always always useful. These words, so I keep them in my face all the time. They're concepts that don't really have words in English or in French. One of my favorite things is a really well loved stuffed animal. Yeah, yeah, there's oh dang, there's something so relatable to it. Or like seeing seeing a, a piece of clothing that has been repaired but you know, in a way that shows that the person cared about it. Uh, these are, are great feelings. So may I please rant about this latest fad about the word ikigai? Yeah, sure, go ahead. I'd be I'm, I'm interested in that. Am I the only person who gets really uncomfortable if something is like? No, I don't think you're the only one. I think there's something really weird about something having no flaws. It's a bit like um, some people who struggle with the blank sketchbook page and to in order to break that struggle they will just do a mark on it and then they're like, okay, now I can work on this page because it's not pristine. No concept would will ever tell me how to be normal. <laughs> well, define normal anyway. This is such an abstract concept. It's it's a big generalization by definition. So ikigai, according to this latest fad, is something you enjoy doing that you're good at, that that you can get paid for, and is needed in the world. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Slaps. <laughs> there you go. Phoebe says, I found my elephant beanie baby the other week and seeing it well loved made me very happy. Aww. So many people say beer is their ikigai or their family or their hobby. It's just what makes you glad to be alive and what you go to work for each day. So technically Ikigai would be like your your inner motivation to do things, right? <laughs> I think people struggle with that concept because it's 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 kind of different around here. There's no, not the same mindset at all. So it's kind of difficult to translate the idea, the concept of it to over here. And this Western interpretation is so super toxic. You don't have to be able to make money on the thing that makes you happy to be alive. Or be need yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking.
It's not a nice twist on the concept of what you go to work for each day. Like, that's sort of a really a big stretch on the concept of making money out of it. But you're like, no, that's not exactly that. Yeah, thanks for the clarification, Otto. There's the, there are those memes, I'm pretty sure you guys must have seen them, but they will have a word in a language that is not English. And it's usually words that don't really have a translation in English. And then they will have like, um, let's say they will have a, like Ikigai, and then they will kind of explain the concept fancily under it. And it, it's... <laughs> Always makes me laugh because I'm like, eh, it's it's not. It's sometimes it's not quite accurate. Like you have one with um, one the one I've seen that kind of boggles me is about hikikomori, I think. And it's it's pun in a way that makes it a positive thing, but I don't think it's supposed to be a positive thing. Dominic says, I think Easterners have a habit of simplifying things and Western interpretations can condense those concepts as easily. Paxipane says, I had this lesson when I was a kid and had a group that would tell me even if I hated the thing I was really good at, it was basically my duty to do it. Oof. That is rough. Phoebe says, I think I have a bit of that mindset that if I'm not profiting of my artwork, then it's inherently a waste of time. But then there are people who play video games for fun and I realize that thought process isn't healthy. That what you do for fun doesn't need to make money, it's just for fun. Yeah. There is such a thing as a hobby and a job. And they, they can be two separate things, completely different things. Actually, it's healthier if you have a job and then a separate hobby. Which is why so many artists, when uh, making art becomes their job, they find themselves in a weird space where they don't have a hobby anymore. And since drawing is the job now, drawing is sort of not fun anymore. migraine goes away quickly yeah oh my gosh Otto says uh, last year someone thought it was a good idea to get me a book about the ikigai written by a non-japanese person how, how wh why I, I can't. I just, I'm trying to. <sighs> so, what is this? Tip Do not buy a person about a book about their own culture written by a non native. I, prom I promise you, it will not go down well. Uh, that that's that's like 
such a faux pas. It's amazing. Like, how can someone be so oblivious? It's, it's so gauche. I can't. I, it, my brain is broken. <laughs> wow. Back ate too much pizza. Dang, Cyan, you ate fast. The pizza was gone quickly. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, but another question. Uh, did the person happen to be a white person? Your life is so pure. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you couldn't stop me from laughing, I guess. It's impossible. No, they were dead serious and genuine about it. Oh, Yes. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Oh, I uh, secondhand embarrassment. I'm so sorry, Otto. I'm so sorry that that, that that white people can be so freaking stupid. And I'm as white as it gets, so I can say that. You can get some similar reactions when someone finds out you're gay and suddenly trying to get you to pick their clothes and style their hair. <laughs> you do not want me styling your hair, I promise. Uh, no, that's so bad. Uh, that's so cringy. <laughs> uh, I would like to apologize for all the white people who think they're woke, but just really ignorant. Yeah, same. I'm so sorry. It's so bad. We need to stage interventions for these people. Like, even when I try to buy a recipe book, let's say I'm looking for a recipe book, and let's say I'm looking for a book of Japanese recipes, I am not gonna buy a book written by someone who is not Japanese. That's just so silly. Like, it's, it makes no sense. They will come up with stupid ideas like of, of how to replace sake with white wine and you'll be like, jeez, what? what's going on? Why? Oh my lord, I wish I had a fireplace so I could actually set fire to them. Do you still have it? Oh my gosh, do you still have that book? Or if they've lived in Japan. But even then... Like, the only, for me personally, the only interest I would have in a book that is written by someone who has lived in Japan would be if it was about them being not from Japan and then living in Japan. Like, their actual perspective on things. But it really bugs my mind when people who are not from a specific culture or nationality go ahead and write a book about it. Because I'm like, yeah, you know things, but... It, it's it's kind of just things you know. It's not things you've lived, necessarily. Do you have a place you can bury it deep underground? <laughs> it's the emergency toilet paper. Remember, I remember after I came out to my parents, they were like, but you don't dress gay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, this hurts. This hurts. There is a book called How to Marry a Finnish Girl, and it is written by a non Finnish guy. And it is like the stereotypical view of Finns, and it's just oh, who, who greenlit this book? Yuck. Oh, no, of course I do not have the book. Well, I mean, you might one day need some paper you can deliberately just throw away, but yeah, I would. 
that the book goes straight into the recycling bin. Straight up. Trees died for that book, can you imagine? Do not tell me how stuff are in Japan if you're not an expert on Japan. I once had a guy trying to tell me how to pronounce the word sakura. I literally saw my husband wince beside me. Oh no. And, and, and it, it was a white person again, right? Oh, it hurts so much. Why do we do that? Why? <laughs> what is wrong with us? <laughs> See, at least you pronounce it perfect. This guy did not. <laughs> well, I mean, speaking French makes it really easy to pronounce Japanese stuff. The only thing that is kind of hard is the R. Like, it doesn't sound like an actual R. It's sort of halfway between an R and an L. So that's the only thing you kind of have to learn about pronunciation. But even then, I mean, I, I was reading on, on learning Japanese and there's this sort of where you put the the accent in a word, like what? Anyway, it's complex stuff. And I was like, <gasps> ah, this is so complex. Oof, I would not want someone telling me I'm pronouncing tortilla wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there's there's always a go to a way to go about this stuff, but yeah, I don't trust people, most general people, to do that. Oh my good grief, Kevin! What? Kevin says, I remember in my granny's nursing home, they had a mini library, but it was almost all books of things to do before you die. Great way to be positive there. Oh, oh no. That's, that's clumsy. Oh, that's terrible. Even if the book was made by an indigenous person, who gives that as a gift? It's kind of weird to me trying to educate someone on their own culture. Yeah, that part is definitely a big no-no. Like you, you gotta, you gotta become self-conscious about things like that. At some point, like it's not because you know someone who is Japanese and have them visit you that you bring them to a Japanese restaurant. That's like, nah, nah, <laughs> don't even think about that. No way. Tortilla. Oh my god, I hate it when people say tortilla. I mean, I'm, I'm, we say tortilla in French, so... I don't, I don't know how to say things in English all the times, but... I mean, I mean, there's, there's a, also a difference between saying a word wrong and when someone corrects you, you're like, Oh, okay, thank you, sorry, I didn't know it was said that way. And being like, no, 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 I know how you say this word, and and then you don't. <laughs> exactly. Otto says, if I pronounce a word in your language, please correct me. However, do not come at me with how to pronounce Japanese words. Yeah, that's... How how worse can it get? It can't. It's just... <laughs> Don't do that. Oh. No, I meant la, like an L sound. Oh, a tortilla. Ooh, weird. No, no, that sounds so wrong. Watching people trying to pronounce Irish, is, that's another one that's like not easy to go around. <laughs> um, Welch is another one of those languages that you're like, with what? Even even like uh, UK English, like you have a place like, like it's written Worcestershire sauce, but you say Worcestershire. I mean, Worcestershire, we should, I don't know. And you're like, well, Okay, um, like if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm not from that place and I pronounce it wrong, please tell me. But 
it's not like you cannot know how to pronounce this stuff unless someone tells you how to pronounce it because if you just read it it it's not the good way tortilla tortilla <laughs> that sounds so weird i say words wrong on purpose but not to the people from that culture yeah exactly I do that with Mr. E all the time, like we say words in a stupid way, just for fun. I wish I could give an example, but there I don't think a single one of those are very mature or not in French, so it would not explain well. Luckily in Finnish we have the answer. Everything is pronounced literally how it is written. No problem. Yeah, that's that's clever. That's actually super clever. Does not try, try to pronounce words that don't have enough vowels. <laughs> Does anyone have snow yet? No, it's it's all melted. They they are uh, predicting freezing rain over the weekend, which is not great. And we had a big like a natural disaster crisis of, of freezing rain back in the nineties, end of the nineties, I think. It was bad. It was really, really bad. Like, like an actual natural, an actual natural disaster. So whenever they sort of predict freezing rain, I always get this sort of twitch of like, uh oh, <laughs> not that again. Everyone pronounces Worcestershire sauce wrong. It's like Worcestershire. <laughs> I struggle with my own language, but there are things that you can't help but be tickled by. Penny pasta means something very different in the way 90% <laughs> Sorry. Mikey says, I am a white person and ethnic white person, but a white person, and I've written about many multicultural subjects. It's all in how you write it and if you are adding to the conversation. Yeah, and you, you gotta be aware that um, like, y you would do the best you can with the knowledge that is available to you, but there's always a chance of, of something being wrong in the way you understood it, because it's not, it's something sort of learned not something that you were sort of born with, if I can say that. <laughs> uh, wait, hold on. How do they say... How do you say penne? Like the word pen, not pin. People say pinny? What? Dude, no. No, 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 no. Pinny. <laughs> Why? Some reason Finnish word uusi vuosi confuses people. It means new year. I had a hard time understanding what. Nothing leaking because Fussy is also leaking. Oh, <laughs> Pina. Oof. 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 Ugh. <laughs> oh, that's that's painful. Over here we have, you guys know that where I live is the the French Canadian province of Canada, technically. Like Quebec is is kind of the biggest place where we speak technically both French and English, presumably. And they um 
they like to translate certain words in French and they sound so ridiculous and I hate it so much. Like, you guys know what pesto is. Like, pesto, it's an Italian word. Everybody's okay with pesto. Well, they translated it to pistu. And it always makes me want to punch someone. <laughs> the way F said pine sounds super southern to me for some reason. It's penne, guys. Penne. <laughs> or, I mean, if you don't know, just call it pasta. Please. <laughs> My attempts at French makes my sweetheart laugh. Aw, after 15 years, it's not better. At least you try. There's a lot of people who've been living here forever and they don't even speak a word of French, which is kind of, it's a bit rude considering. Like, please, at least try. Learn, like, bonjour, bonne journée, merci, s'il vous plaît. <laughs> like, a few basic words that will be super handy. We could always move on to farfal. Uh. My mom and I can have whole conversations pronouncing words wrong. <laughs> you should see some of the looks we get when we do it while shopping. This has got to be so funny. The, the part about pronouncing words wrong that always makes me laugh is is a bit like what you get with the penny pastas. It's when people do their best to pronounce something differently because they're like, oh, but no, if I say it right, it's too offending. Like it's, It looks too close to another word that is possibly immature or if, like not exactly offensive, like um, someone would really get angry, but they might be flustered by it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't say farfalle right either, but I, I say it in French mostly, so... Before going on holiday to another country, I spent some time learning phrases like thank you, hello, can you tell me where the is and all that. It's... <laughs> well... People will appreciate it so much more if you make an effort. Like, I can speak French and English, and if I'm downtown when it's tourist season on a regular year, not this year, and someone, like, asks me for directions, I will be... Like, I will speak to them in English, no problem, but it will score a lot of points in my, my heart. If the person approaches me with like, uh, bonjour, excusez-moi, and they try, you know, they actually tried. And you're like, oh, I speak English, fine, it's fine, no problem. But the fact that they tried, it's like the minimum of respect that it's actually nice to see. Farfai. That, if I read that, it says farfalai. So... That sounds weird. For fai. For fai? For fale. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, exactly, it's a kaboo. People love it when you try because it means that, that you put some effort in it and that you care. French is something that makes me melt. Aw, long time ago when Ruka was a puppy, a French gentleman came petting Ruka and speaked English to me, but French to Ruka. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's adorable. I need to stop picking at my fingers, but they're like the Velcro thing again. And it's really annoying. <laughs> okay. That, 
That is the misconception certainly some people have that drives me mad. Otto says that French people, especially waiters, are rude to non-French people. So not true. Well, they are rude if you don't even make an effort to speak French to them. I agree with the exception of Paris. Yeah, Paris is... I think Paris is a bit of a... a, a, a whole, like a, a... not the most friendliest of places. Paris is not France. No, it's not, but it's it's still in France. Otto says, when I was in Paris for a month, I went everywhere speaking the most god-awful French. Aw, I'm pretty sure it wasn't that bad, since you speak Japanese. Everyone let me speak it all out at snail speed, never interrupted me, and then replied to me kindly in English. Yes, 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 this I love to see. In the same way that I would try to learn a few sentences in Japanese if I was to go to Japan. I mean, come on. Every French person I met while in France was are, was lovely, are lovely. They were legit mean to us and we did speak French to them and they just replied, eh, looking confused. Yeah, that's 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 not great. <laughs> For falle or falafel. <laughs> not quite the same thing, though I think if you combine both it would still be tasty. I think the thing with Paris is that it is such a big city with a lot of activity and a lot of people like being there. It's a bit like Montreal in that sense, I think, is that sometimes people are just so stressed out or so thinking about something else for the locals, I mean, that they don't really um, put on a friendly and gentle facade. But any any waiter that works in a restaurant should have the patience like, it, you have to be patient. That's kind of your job. Science says, I have noticed that Finnish is hard to learn when in Finland, since Finns switch always to English when speaking with foreigners, even if they try to speak Finnish. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 please speak to me in Finnish. I want to learn it. <laughs> please. My granddad was Cajun French who came down from Canada to New Orleans. I still remember his lumberjack French accent from when I was a kid. And he would speak French when he didn't want me to know. Did he swear in lumberjack French? <laughs> And he's from Auvergne, which says it's not really part of France either. I have, I'll have to check. I wonder if, if Auvergne is a bit like um, Alsace. Maybe you actually stumbled upon a psychic chef. <laughs> I don't think so. I always make sure not to swear in front of me. <laughs> oh. Ugh. I'm starting to get the uh, old coffee smell coming from my mug. Blah. Have a good lunch, Phoebe. Kevin says, weird thing I like to do when bored, learn swear words in other languages and roast my siblings with them. <laughs> well, they stand there confused. <laughs> oh, 
okay. <laughs> Why did I think you just drank paint water? Well, because it's it's possibility always in a, in an art stream, but it's it's not paint water. It's actual water. Italian has the most colorful swears. Do they, though? They they put on the most colorful display. Like, the whole show is amazing. I know, because we have a lot of um, Italian-Canadian people around here. And um, it, it happens on a regular basis that we will see people talking outside on the sidewalk. And me and Mr. E, we will be like, hmm, are they just like chatting or are they actually angry with one another and we never actually know but i would say that that lumberjack french has some amazing swear words and like i said in a previous stream we can go on forever with those finnish has really flexible swears they can be all mangled together yeah i think i think we have it's similar here what is the best meal you ever had in your life? Oh, good question, Otto. And tough one. My favorite swear in the world is Italian, and it's just so, so terrifically wrong. <laughs> You'll have to share with us on the Discord if, if it's possible. I'm still thinking about the best meal I've had in my life. Will do. We'll try to make it a little less colorful, but it's good, and you have definitely all been this mad at least. <laughs> I'm eager to see that. And yeah, yeah, you can sort of uh, make it a bit more uh, palatable if you want, and just so that we get an idea of what it was. Mikey says I was pregnant and craving Greek food. There were three different restaurants that deliver. I got everything to eat. Definitely best meal ever. Aww. That sounds awesome. Trisha says, I always think my family is arguing in their German-Russian mix, so I can't understand, but they were actually just making plans for the next day. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Cyan says, I was in a small restaurant and I couldn't eat anything because of allergies. Uh, the cook came from the kitchen and asked what I could eat, and he made me the most delicious salmon pasta I've ever had. See, that's sort of why restaurants have chefs. Sure, there's a menu, but um, I'm always bothered when you ask for, say, you ask for a meal, or in your case, like, there's nothing you can eat. The whole point of this not being a fast food is that there's a chef in there, someone who knows cooking and is supposed to enjoy it as well so like they should be able to put something together for a customer or at least like if you ask for a specific meal without an ingredient in them like it everything is not pre-made in in the best situation so since they cook your order and it's not like something that is pre-packed pre-made they should be able to to sort of cater to your requests a bit, at least. Please. <laughs> Emisha says, at a tiny converted mill outside of Lyon, on the patio, patio, overlooking the sunset with the animals and ponds. Whoa. 
Toxabain says, that's really tough, but my brain said it was the bacon cheeseburger after seven years of no meat. <laughs> oh man, bacon. Bacon. Still trying to figure out what mine would be. Like I, I, I can't think of many times when like sp special um, events around food, but I'm trying to think of a moment where the food itself was everything, and not the moment around it. If you know what I mean. Satisfying a pregnancy craving is like the best thing ever. Okay, so I can tell if it was just the food or everything combined, but it was like something out of a movie. Yeah, that's that's what I'm trying to figure out, Amisha. <laughs> Lexa Payne says, um, Hubs got me a seven course meal at the hotel we were married at. Aww. And I was sick, so it was the best looking meal I've ever missed. He got 14 courses. <laughs> Ota says, mine is, sorry to vegans, bison steak I had in Jackson Hole on my birthday during a coast to coast camping tour. Just having proper food was simply amazing. It sounds great. Where is, where is Jackson Hole? Trisha says, I've had many awesome meals ranging from a restaurant, schnitzel, fancy pasta, and Chick-fil-A. Any meal can become the best if I'm hungry enough. That's a fair point. I miss Wyoming so much. It's bison gamey. If a meat is gamey, you can always cook it in some alcohol. It helps removing some of the gaminess. Same with fish. If some fish is a bit too fishy... <laughs> You can cook it with some alcohol, unless you're allergic, but yeah. Although Gina's pizza in Chicago was mind-blowing too. Was it the, the weird deep dish to Chicago pizza? <laughs> the weird idea there. I've reached my limit of meat talk. Thanks everyone. Oh, well, have a great weekend, Stephen. I had a friend who cooked at McDonald's. She always cleaned the countertop and made sure there were no onion contamination when we ate there. Oh, that's awesome. Jackson Hole is next to Yellowstone. I'll have to check that up in Google. <laughs> um. all added up to the most perfect meal. Not all the best dishes, but best combo, combo of food, setting, and company. Aww. That was with your sweetheart, right? I mean, we can sort of um, infer that. Our truffle pasta that was covered in a mountain of shaved truffle truffles in Luca in Italy. Dang, that's amazing. The real deep pan pizza, the real stuff is amazing. What makes it amazing? It's such a weird concept to have... I mean, same thing with deep dish cookies. I mean, what? <laughs> what? What, is, what makes the deep dish pizza... Like, what, what makes it work? Dang, that sounds amazing. Hold on, I got it. Check out Yellowstone. Uh, Tsukabu says, and there's a restaurant in Montana by East Glacier that made the best buffalo patties. Been a while since I've been there, but it was so tasty. A good burger. Like, someone can cook a good patty. 
I literally went on a three-week camping trip just to go see the Prism Lake in Yellowstone. Is that the Rainbow Lake? Because if so, I think that's the most Otto thing ever. Like, Otto will travel uh, half a world away <laughs> to go see the huge natural rainbow. Sounds about right. <laughs> Iowa City, which is one of the few socialist cities in the US, was a wonderful place to live. But I wouldn't live 15 miles outside of the city. Oh, Yogi Bear lives there. So Yellowstone is the, the big um, natural, natural reserve, right? When you see Prism Lake, you will understand why I had to see it. <laughs> yeah, it's the big rainbow lake, right? That's like f full of all sorts of weird chemicals, but that makes it rainbowy. <laughs> It's, it's so mind-boggling because you're like, what happened here? Why is this thing so... It's a bit like when, when you see um, a colorful frog and you know that it's toxic. You look at that lake and you're like, I'm pretty sure no one can swim in there, but it's so pretty. Yellowstone is, I think, one of two biggest super volcanoes. A volcano? Ooh. Colors are from microbe activity. Oh, that's even more interesting. Though probably not any more swimmable. <laughs> well, the deep dish pizza I had to build was almost fried in olive oil. It's so good. The one is under my mom's. Oh, oh no. One restaurant had the biggest slices of pie and biggest glasses I've ever seen. Dude, big slice of pie. That's a that's a good one. That's a good rating on Yelp. <laughs> Dean Winchester would approve. <laughs> it was like a towering pie. It was like a towering piece of warm apple pie that we were all impressed with. Was it like um, clearly handmade pie? I love pie. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mikey says, I've traveled with nothing and I've traveled with all the monies. Uh, they both have pluses and minuses. Definitely. Now I want some pie. I think we all do. I could go for a slice of pie. Yes, they're made their pies. Oh, dang. Yummy. I want butter pie like the Canadians made. The Canadians, we make butter pie. Pie with butter. I think it's mostly a sugar pie, but yeah. I think the filling is like uh, uh, sugar and butter and maybe some cream, I guess. The place smelled of cinnamon and baked apples. Ooh. Can't wait to get my digital tablet. It's a Huion, I think. When are you getting it, Kevin? 
I could go for a Nanaimo bar, Nanaimo, um, or anything actually. Everything's got so much dairy in it though. <laughs> it's like, oh, this looks too good. I'm gonna have this. I'm gonna have pains. And then you're you're like in pain and you're like, it was worth it. My granny's version was sugar, butter, cinnamon sprinkle, and a splash of vanilla. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much like the pie dough is the regular pie and then the stuffing. Sugar and butter is what we kinda have in the French Canadian like sugar pies. They can make them with a maple syrup too. But we have something that is called literally sugar pie, tarte au sucre. Cannot reproduce them. Oh no, do you have your grandma's recipe? Bring in the Yule log. Oh, dang. I'm eager to... I want to make... I've, I've shared the <laughs> the various parts of my Yule log sort of recipe on the Discord. And I've also included the link to my favorite recipe for a you know chocolate cake. And I use the same icing for both. And um, I'm really excited to make it. And then eat it. And then eat more. <laughs> uh, Trisha says, I've recently had the displeasure, displeasure of trying a pecan pie that was too sweet for even a second bite. Wait, what? Nah. Nah, 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 nah. I don't believe it. <laughs> UK fudge and more specifically Scottish tablet tastes just like a praline with no pecans. Though, hold on, praline is made from almonds and hazelnuts that are um, caramelized in sugar and then blended. That's what praline is, like textbook praline. Praline, praline. <laughs> My granny's recipe are all a pinch of, a handful of, and have huge hands. <laughs> Aww. This year, my mom and I are going to make some Reese's peanut butter and chocolate fudge. Ooh. I missed the real mincemeat my church used to make. It had real meat in it and actually made a lovely lunch by itself. I thought mincemeat was mostly dried fruits. There are sugar and butter boiled and pickens dumped in. Sometimes it's smooth and sometimes they are gooey and sticky depending on the family making them. Well, it's exactly like uh, the white fudge we have here. Le sucre à crème. <laughs> so, yeah, some people make it with cream. But you can definitely, like, just make it with um, sugar and butter. The one with maple syrup is just maple syrup and butter that you boil and then you whip. My mouth is watering. I want all of the sweet stuff, but it's gonna hurt so much. Okay, what else? Let's draw a Yule log. Though one that is sliced, because otherwise it's just a bunch of icing.
It's gonna be really hard to have dinner tonight without any dessert. Dessert? Sweet stuff at the end. Because dang, everything sounds delicious. Trisha, you're supposed to be able to taste the buttery caramel and the pecan nutty flavor, not just all sugar. I would still eat it. <laughs> Hi. I like sweet stuff. <laughs> Most of it is apples and dried stuff. My church made a different version and had more meat than apple. That's interesting. My mom makes the best Russian cookies. Has crushed up nuts. What's what makes it uh what what's technically a Russian cookie? Mix it up and make a fruit pizza for supper. <laughs> I only got banana and apples on it and oranges. I think most fruits are not in season at the moment, so. As a kid, I always ate the batter, even after the eggs were added. Yeah, same here. I mean, when when we would make cookies, like whatever dough was left after cutting up the cookies, we would eat it raw. <laughs> Cyan says, side note, I'm moving my handmade paint collection to bigger tin. I'll need to notice that nope, still too small. Maybe you'll have to use two tins. The fact that she learned it from a Russian mom. I, yeah, I mean, just w what? what's it like? Since we don't have a picture of the cookie, like, is it more of a shortbread? Is it like a chocolate chip cookie, but with nuts instead? What's What kind of cookie is it? Is basically what I'm trying to get to. My mom used to do a couple of um, classics during the holidays. The Yule log was one, though hers was not exactly looking like that. She would cut off pieces of it to make it look like the log has branches, and we would keep uh, decorations from previously bought Yule logs, like, you know, a Santa with uh, a reindeer and a sleigh, and just like put them on and decorate the tree, the, the log like that. But she would also make a quarter, what, what's it, quarter pound? Pound cake? Pound cake. I think it is. Like the super dense, buttery, flavorful thing. And she would put uh, the maraschino, maraschino cherries in it. Green and red ones. And also, um, she called them uh, like uh, roll cookies. It's basically like a cookie that you mix. It would have... Um, walnuts in it, yeah, I was looking for that word, and the cherries again, and you would basically make a cylinder out of it and roll it in plastic wrap and freeze it. Freezer cookies, I think she called them. And when we wanted cookies, you would just take the roll out of the freezer, use a sharp knife and cut slices and then bake them, and it would be sort of like a, a bit like a shortbread cookie, but with nuts and uh, cherries in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I'm hungry now. Science says, well, they're basically in three tins. Since I have the botanical collection, it's all and sparklies are the only ones. Oof. <laughs> Box of paint. <laughs> okay, so Trisha says, it's a dry cookie with butter, vanilla sugar, and a crushed nut. She rolls them into croissants and then sprinkle with powdered sugar. It's not too sweet and very savory. It sounds amazing. Hey, welcome back, Phoebe and Otto. Oh Lord, now I have to have the delicious coconut caramel in something. I'm glad you like them. I wasn't quite sure because sometimes like the, the coconut taste can be a bit too strong with these uh, dairy-free alternatives. Do you prefer the hard ones or the soft ones? Oh, 
man, fudge. I was talking about this with a friend and we were discussing about like various tolerances for things. Like she was telling me that, um, uh, yeah, we were talking about the Canadian white fudge. And uh, she was saying how she can only have a teeny tiny bit and then it's like too much sugar for her. And we were discussing how stuff like, um, like she she won't, in her case it was like, I can't have that kind of fudge, but if you give me maple taffy, I can eat a lot and it's still just as sweet. And I was like, yeah, and for me it's the stuff like icing and fudge, I can eat a lot of it. And it, it doesn't gross me out as quickly as something like whipped cream. Whipped cream, I was never never able to eat any whipped cream. And and like how certain things that are sweet are okay, but other things that are just as sweet, they don't work out as well. And same with things that are super fat. Some like we can eat and some we just can't. And I think it's it's really funny. Like I wonder what what makes this preference. I agree. I wasn't sure if I was going to like them for the exact same reason, but um, num, 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 thank you so much. <laughs> don't make me choose. Okay, okay, don't choose them. <laughs> if you had a a clear favorite, I would I would know to get you that one. But if you like both, I mean, it's like you know this recipe about vegan fudge that is basically you melt. Uh, chocolate and coconut oil together and mix it and then let it get solid again I can't do that 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 just kills me it's too fat and too much coconut even the one with coconut milk they're like too much for me I tried making curry once something that was savory and the coconut milk in it like really grossed me out and I'm like why <laughs> why is it doing that My friend literally buys a can of whipped cream and sprays it into her mouth. <laughs> See, everybody has different preferences. Yeah, and it feels weirdly cold, like when you eat it. You mean the, the super coconutty thing or the, the caramels? But yeah, the, the fudge with the chocolate and the oil is... Ah, oh, it's disgusting. It is so bad. I hate it. I hate that people promote that as a as an option. It's like there's nothing like fudge. Go away. I remember my great aunt making uh, truffles, but they were they were the recipe of truffles with a bit of alcohol in them. <laughs> but since they were like this texture that I really love, this this truffle texture. I would eat them anyway as a kid and always be like, whoa, what is this weird aftertaste? That's the alcohol, champ. <laughs> the cocoa and coconut oil. Oh yeah, no, that's that's the stupid oil. Oh, it's so bad. I think it's my one of my organs in there that is like, nope. Truffles with alcohol. <laughs> my attention beaked. <laughs> Did you really get a recipe that was just like uh, like the the cacao powder and the oil? The ones I had seen were like you buy like dairy free chocolate, you melt it, then you add the oil, you melt it as well, and then you mix, and everything solidifies into this sort of oily chocolate afterwards. I'm so glad you don't like that abomination. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. I tried because I I used to love fudge. And it's it's made chocolate fudge is made like from condensed milk and melted chocolate. The most basic recipe is that. And condensed milk is still milk. And the only condensed milk that I've seen that is not milk is coconut and it's still the same problem. What's everyone's favorite sweet as an adult? A great big bin of buttercream icing. <laughs> We made tortellini with the tomato sauce and some California wine last week. Ooh. 
when there's a, there's a cookbook, cookbook called Drunken Food, there has to be. There has to be. Let's let's draw even more delicious sweet things so that I'm miserable later. <laughs> Dang cupcakes. Like me being me, it always cracks me up when we get like store bought cupcake with you know like the the poop emoji of, of icing on them. Like ta da this is a cupcake. And my friends are like, oh, this is too much icing and all that. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, to me, this is enough icing for half of it. Like, I would split this this thing and have as many icing on the bottom half. Like, bring it. Not saying it, I wouldn't be in a sugar coma after, but... Dude, that's, that's the bomb. Vervain ice. What is that? Dark chocolate mousse with vervain ice. Ooh, that sounds super fancy. Vervain is a liquor made in Le Puy that they make an ice of in summer. Ooh. Otto <laughs> says, I will eat anything dark chocolate, whatever it is. <laughs> According to Duff Goldman from Food Network, you split the cupcake in half and eat it as a sandwich. Yeah, I've seen that, but no. No, 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 no. You eat the bottom half first so that this part has the proper ratio of cake and icing. <laughs> this is the Ev way of eating a stupid cupcake. Sort of like if chartreuse tasted good. <laughs> what does chartreuse taste like? Absolutely not. I've eat the icing first. <laughs> yeah, but no, if you eat the icing first, then you're stuck with a stupid blend cake. Chartreuse tastes like grass. Oof. I would eat the cake first so that you end on the high note of the icing. That's what I would do with my cake slices as a kid. You know, when you get a cake slice and it's sort of, um, let's say it's a, it's a two layer cake. So you basically have icing like this and then you have like, like this is cake, this is cake and the rest is icing. Well, I would, I would chop out the cake and eat that first and then be left with sort of a like this shape of icing and eat that last because that was my favorite part. Starbought loft house cookies are my absolutely absolute pain. Are those pre-cooked or are, are those the ones you, you cook yourself? I mean, hey, kind of grass, not the hippie kind. <laughs> That's the good part. No, 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 the cake is gross. <laughs> not gross, but it's not the best part. Confession, I've never had a cupcake. I've had muffins, but not a cupcake. If you've had a slice of cake, that's about the same thing. It's just a teeny tiny cake. How about cat sledding for a sketch? Um, I did draw uh, two cats, well, sort of sledding. They were using one of those uh, saucer type um, sleds, if I can say that. It's in my um, coloring book pages that you can download for free on Gumroad. I think 
my favorite sweet as a kid was cake. Still is one of my favorite sweet today. Like handmade cake. My, my mom would usually make the cake part from a uh, boxed mix because it was just easier and she would make the icing herself. You can get all yeah if you check if you click that link that Otto has shared there's a gumroad page on there and there's a bunch of coloring pages that you can get there to either print or trace on watercolor paper or just print as is and color for fun It's been a while since I've sat in a, <laughs> in a sled. What is everyone's favorite non-native cuisine? Mine is definitely Japanese. The technically lack of dairy makes it really, really compelling. Plus everything is so delicious. I think the one we eat the most is probably like Italian stuff, like pizza and pasta. But my absolute favorite would be uh, Japanese cuisine. <laughs> oh, I miss that. It's adorable. French, like my favorite non-native. Oh, that's so cute. Mine is Italian, Otto says, but Korean is a close second. Yeah, you 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 have a uh, you have the, the the awesome Japanese foods as a native option. Korean food looks amazing. I, I just find it a bit difficult to get um, good Korean food that is not bibimbap around here. And I think for some reason, when they make the rice with the um, the purple rice, um, it gives me a really bad stomach ache. Every, for some odd reason, every food that is purple gives me a stomach ache. Beets give me a stomach ache. That stupid purple rice does too. I'm like, why? <laughs> What's wrong? But um, yeah, I, I, I wish I could find a place that has like the... Uh, what's it called? I think it's called Namul. Namul? All the um, the many different sort of meals you get from uh, either like the cooked vegetables or the fermented ones or like it's you have rice but you have all sorts of side dishes that are Korean I've, I haven't eaten many other foods but I know that Italian food is excellent it is how weird <laughs> Oh, you also ate purple food, so we cannot eat purple foods together. Awesome. Um, cabbage, red cabbage, summer cake. Um, the red onions. I don't know. I don't really eat onions, like I've said. The last time I cooked with an onion, it was a, a white or yellow onion. Beets, red cabbage, red onions. I don't trust the purple vets. <laughs> purple vets?
What's the difference between the red onions and the other onions? So you would usually have the rope and a uh, person in front would sort of hold on to the rope. Like oddly because it was a bit too long. I'm trying to remember my, my sledding experiences. We very few instances of, of uh, What's the action? Like, you use a sled, but what do you do? We call it uh, glisser in French, but I, I can't find it. Oh, veg! I don't trust purple veg. Yeah, same. The only purple veg that has worked for me is purple potatoes, in the sense that the skin is purple, but the potato is yellow. That has been okay, but it, it's not a lot of purple, really. They burn my mouth if they're raw. Whoa. I think red onions are stronger and yellow onions are more sweet. Huh. The red onions taste stronger and more metallic. I don't like them. I don't like raw onions. I hate having onion, but... Dude! Why eat raw onions? I... I it, it, it has bugged me ever since, um... You know, bagels with cream cheese and smoked salmon were a thing? Like, in restaurants, they always serve them with capers and a raw red onion, and I'm always like, ew, get that stuff away from the good salmon and the bagel. What is wrong with you? <laughs> They're too strong and remind me of horseradish. Some onions you can eat raw and some you need to cook. Jupiter grapes are good while being purple. <laughs> hey, have a good dinner, Mikey. <laughs> and uh, see you on the Discord. Have a great weekend. I use shallots instead of onions. So wait, hold on. Um, there's shallots and there's green onions. And when I check up shallots at the grocery store, they're like these, this shape of sort of, it's a bit like an onion, but it's like a drop shaped onions. That's what they sell as shallots. And um, the green onions are the thingies, you know, with the the long stalk and it's white at the bottom and it, it gets to be green uh, and it has like roots. And which is it? Because um, in French, we call these échalotes. So it's really confusing because you have shallots and we have échalotes and they're not the same or are they the same? This brain. I don't eat raw onions to find their way through. Yeah, they're in everything. Like, ew. No, cook the freaking onion, if anything. It's like raw onions, everything tastes of onion afterwards. Like, you, it stays in, in the mouth, and whatever you eat will taste like onion. I'm literally dead. My boyfriend loves those salmon bagels with capers and he always said they're the best. Well, they're good without the capers and onions though. <laughs> like the salmon, what's the, um, they put some um, dill on it and lemon juice and when I could eat cream cheese, I mean, cream cheese was good. So bagel, cream cheese, salmon, dill and uh, Lemon juice, that's delicious. And you can even sprinkle pepper on top. Why do you have to put the stupid capers and the onions? The onions will like overwhelm every single other taste on there. It's just gonna taste like onions. Stupid capers. <laughs> yeah, I don't do 
I've, there are a couple of things like that that I've never been able to enjoy. Kickers are one of them. I would kind of understand black olives more than I would understand capers on a bagel. Who decided to take like the the bud of a plant and be like, huh, I'm going to take these, like collect a bunch of them, put them in a bucket and and like pickle them. And then we're going to use that as a fancy element in food. And it doesn't taste good. <laughs> Ew, olives. Oh, dang. Well, we won't fight for the capers and olives then. You guys can keep the capers and I'll get the olives. Today I found out black olives are just green olives. Yeah, they're olives that are ripe, I think. But oddly enough, black olives, they don't taste like anything. They don't have much of a taste to them. Green olives are much tastier. It's really weird how sometimes black olives you get, not this, perhaps the Kalamata ones are a bit better in terms of that, but like regular black olives that you get in a bottle or a tin. And like the very basic one, you eat the black olives and you're like, it is such a subtle taste, it's almost like eating nothing. Really depends on the cure. Yeah, of course. Uh, olives and oil are usually a bit better, and if they have some sort of seasoning in the in the mix, that that's good. But I'm, I'm speaking of the the most bland stuff that you can get in a tin. Although never let a person trick you into trying fresh olives from the tree. <laughs> I think you've mentioned that before. It sounds super unpleasant. What even are capers? Well, they're they're buds. Like you know, when a plant grows out and is about to spring new leaves, they I think they cut off the bud of it, and it's just like you can sort of see the leaves in the caper. I was mentioning it, it earlier, Otto. I don't know if you were there, but I found my favorite olives, and they are so good. They're basically olives in oil. And they have like uh, spicy pepper flakes and fennel seeds, I think. And it's such a good mix. They don't have anything else. They don't have uh, like garlic or, you know, it's it's a very delicious flavor profile. They have all sorts of, of olives at the, the, the grocery, but those are like the best. They don't have any garlic in it, so that's a plus for me. And the spiciness and the depth of the flavor of the um, the fennel seeds. <laughs> Is it like getting people to put a lot of Vegemite on a toast and, and then telling them to eat it? Or like natto? Is it as bad as natto? My dietary fructose intolerance pretty much cancels out most green things. I would think that the green things would be okay in the sense that usually uh, green things are veggies and they don't have a lot of sugar in them. So they don't have a lot of fructose. Like if you think of a green bell pepper, it's not very sweet. I'm still going to put olives on my pizza tonight. <laughs> That's a thing that will happen. That that's the the most pure form of learning. It's like getting an idea and 
being like, hey, maybe I can try this, and then doing it and realizing that it was a terrible idea and that you will never do that again. <laughs> Learn fast, you don't do that. Uh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, that's, that's kind of sad. I ate the tomato from my Oma's garden once and it was yucky. I have a similar story with that, that than Palo but with tomatoes. Because uh, uh, forever, I've never really loved raw tomatoes. And as a kid, I was like, okay, I really don't like this. And I, I, I can't even swallow it. Like, it's, it's really something that bothers me in the taste of tomatoes. And I remember being outside, like, around a friend's house and uh, I guess that that friend's parents had uh, cherry tomatoes growing on their um, around their house, and I remember seeing a cherry tomato in in one of the plants. And remember, I, I was a kid; I was pretty young, like five, maybe five or six. And I saw the tomato, and I was like, "This is a perfect, perfect little tomato. It's small, it's perfectly red, it's unblemished, it is beautiful." I will grab it and I will eat it. And it's got to be good because it's so pretty and lovely. And yeah, that's when I figured out that no, tomatoes are not for me. Like sometimes you would think that since like some people and we all have done that, but we all block about certain foods, but we don't really know why. Like I've never tried an oyster because they don't look yummy. Perhaps they are, but just the look has made it so I haven't bothered. But with the tomato, like, I really tried and I was really, like, putting good energies and I was really hopeful and it just didn't work. <laughs> I can't do... I can't do raw tomatoes. I can't even smell raw tomatoes. I've only recently been able to stomach raw tomatoes and burger and tacos. It's, it's such a weird fruit slash veggie. <laughs> I had a fried oyster and it was okay till I saw a black spot at the center, then I stopped. What What's the black spot? Yeah, when I go to the regular grocery store, uh, I really have to grab my avocados and cucumber quickly because they're right next to the tomato bin. And and the smell of the tomato is really, really bothers me. I will eat everyone's oyster. <laughs> See, we're a good crowd. Like, if we had a, a table full of food, uh, we could all split things into, like, what we like and don't like. I, w I really love cooked tomatoes, though. A big fan of cooked tomatoes. But there's really a difference in taste when the tomato is raw and when it's cooked. So there's got to be something in there that that causes this this sort of difference in appreciation. It's no big deal, though, because Mr. E doesn't like tomatoes either so we just never buy any <laughs> the smell of tomato vines or a tomato that hasn't been washed will give me an immediate migraine and i will throw up with a minute oh yeek do you know what what compound makes you react this way
I have never seen tomato jam. No, but it's in the vine. Huh. Hmm. I'll try to keep that in mind. If I ever get the um, impulse to do some research on the various compounds in tomato. Because I don't have any issue with the other... Um, oh, what are they called? They have a kick-ass name. All the the fruits slash, slash veggies in that uh, family. Nightshade. Like, I can eat all the nightshady stuff, no problem, but the smell of tomatoes, bleh. Thanks for selling cats. Oh, I'm <laughs> you're welcome, Sally. It's not a big, it's not a big sketch, but you always come up with such fun ideas. Like I still have my list of notes from the last, last week. Dang, weeks go by so quickly. Have you guys, people who have um, gone through snowy winters and done some sledding, <laughs> do you guys remember like when? And like you go sledding and either it's a sled that you share with friends or you make like a chain of, of saucers or whatnot and you start sledding but at some point you don't really keep the trajectory you wanted and you have to uh, to like abort the, the the slide so everybody would sort of duck to the side like um, a bit like when uh, like plane pilots, they eject from the planes and they have the parachutes. Well, the, the the sort of the equivalent in sledding is when you just like duck on the side and land in the snow, mid mid slide, <laughs> to try and not end up in the tree. You know. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Phoebe. I hope you have a great weekend. Fried green tomatoes. I haven't had them, but I saw the movie. The movie is amazing. Mission aboard. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, um, there's a wall coming, or there's a car, or there's a tree, and we are going way too fast, so we need to um, put on the brakes, which in this case is just dive on the side. <laughs> hey, that works as well. Trisha says, we didn't use sleds, we piled up snow on a hill to make a ramp and put trash bags on our bodies and slide down on our bellies. Yeah, we would do that too, but with crazy carpets. Crazy carpets are just like um, tree skis, they're one part fun, one part dangerous. <laughs> because the, the crazy carpet, they're basically just a, a sheet of plastic that's perhaps a bit like this. Well, straight, not... not and it has handles, so basically just two holes in there. And the concept is that you sit over here and you fold over this part, so it's it's a bit like a sled. But you could also like, and sometimes crazy carpets, they would have like the square edges. Those were problematic because sometimes if you were a bit uncareful or or uh, reckless, you could try to grab your crazy carpet by the handle and hold it in front of you, and then like give run and then jump and slide on your belly as well um or you would sit and have all this extra piece of carpet on the back but the crazy carpet they would sometimes like turn and twist and if you would get any part of the plastic carpet whip about your face it is so painful and it can cut you open <laughs> it's really dangerous those stupid carpets and more often than not the handle will break so you would have Either like like a handle that is like separated or half a handle anyway, and then the tree skis. I mean, it's it's basically like a, a seat. Uh, how would they build up? It's a bit like a bike in a way, but more cheap. And it has the ski in the front that's like connected to a handle, and then you have sort of one ski here and another ski there. And sometimes they would have brakes are basically just bits that you press on with your foot and they're shaped like this and they have like teeth so when you press them down in the snow they're supposed to grab the snow but those things would go first super fast and you could sort of control them a bit using the handles because they would move this front ski so you could sort of turn but dang when you 
take a dive from those. It's it's one hell of a dive. Well, that's not great for kids. Yeah, but you know, not like we cared. <laughs> When I was young, we had the, whole, the old steel saucer sleds. Really? Steel? We had plastic saucers, like, literally, like the ones I drew in that, that gram road drawing with the handle over here, and it had like a, a bit of a curled edge and another handle, and it was just plastic. And since it was the 90s, those were neon pink. Like, you could never lose those in the snow. Mr. He had a commotion from lending in a tree from sledding. I don't think, like, no one really realized by then, but in, in retrospect, I think what happened is that a scarf got in his face and he couldn't see that he was heading toward a tree. And he went bang in the tree. Sorry, headphone users, maybe that was too loud. I always wrote that shape, but make like the radio flyer red wagons. I have no idea what that is. And since we were a bunch of kids, we would often make chains. So you would have someone would be the like a train. So someone with like a plastic sled might be like two, there would be two people in there, and and then. Um, you might have someone with a saucer there and they would either hold each other by hand or grab onto the sled and and then another one and for occasion I wasn't on your phone oh whew. <laughs> sorry and and like and then all that would go down the go down the, the hill And at some point, sometimes like this would, like the middle one would start leading the train, and everybody got to. Sorry, gotta go get some. Oh no problem. I'm gonna end this soon. It's almost five anyway, so you guys know that's about the time we end things. Thank you so much for being here, Otto. Despite all the attention, that, I mean, we, we both know how bad that is. Stupid tension. That sounds so painful, Trisha. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, uh, yeah, it's always more for the social side than for the art side these days. But um, yeah, it was fun. I really enjoyed talking with you guys on on Saturday, and it's always such a fun moment and a real community moment, which we can all use in those weird times. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. Uh, we are getting super close to Christmas. Like it's not next week, but the one after that. So yeah, we'll see. Um, you can keep up with the news on the Discord if you want. It's free. There's a link in the description. You just click the link. It will set it all up. It's super straightforward, super easy to use. And if you have any question, you can ask anyone over there. And people are super friendly and awesome. And yeah, I want to thank Otto for being there as a moderator and always on point with the links. And um, and thanks to everyone for being there as well. We will see each other soon and I wish you a great week. Bye-bye. Um,